Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, today's debate. Uh, my name is Jędrzej Błaszczak and I represent the Center for International Debate in Katowice, founded from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Found Republic of Poland. Uh, the topic of today's debate is green transformation in Central and Eastern Europe from a civil society perspective. I have a lot of honorable guests today with me from all across the Europe. Um, we will talk about the perspective, the future of green transformation, European Green Deal, uh, from the NGO perspective, which is very important because we all represent non-governmental uh, organization. Uh, I will start with the short introduction of our today's participants. Uh, first is Ali Bazade, key board member of the Long-Term Planning Association. He is currently working for United Nations in a humanitarian field. Long-term planning main objective is to initiate long-term planning for youth growth through implementing both local and international projects. Ali is managing the ongoing project in terms of its facilitation, bringing up solutions for technology development and ensuring the alignment of service provided to the required standards. Ali, great to have you here. The second yeah. participant is Robin Deva, who is a president and founder of Slovenian NGO Body Sveboda from Ljubljana. Body Svebloba, sorry. NGO is a member organization of Slovenian NGDO platform, Slogda, and a member organization of International Anti-Poverty Network Global Call to Action Against Poverty. Robin Deva is a teacher by profession and active in the field of global education and sustainable development goals. He is a member of Slogda Board Council. In 2011, he was a candidate for Slovenian parliamentary elections on the list of Youth Party Greens of Europe. Great to have you here, Robin. Hello. Thank you. The third participant is Pavel Kopczyk, who is a co-founder of Carvina Sustainability, an NGO dedicated to promoting sustainable development in Carvina district. Pavel is currently studying economics, business and management at Silesian University. He is a passionate advocate for sustainability, actively involved in promoting ecological and sustainable practice both in local community and through his academic endeavors. Pavel, welcome. Hello. Hello. The fourth one is Peling Ozoturk, co-founder and the president of the Innovative, Innovative Education Center in Austria, both the rich academic background with a bachelor degree in international relations and a master in international affairs and public policy. Since 2008, she has been a dynamic figure in immersing herself in sectors such as education, innovation, rural development, sustainability, youth empowerment, green entrepreneurship, and gender equality. Her extensive experience has endowed her with a robust skill set that includes outstanding communication, effective networking, adept negotiation, and proficiency in public implementation and development. Pelin, great to have you here today. Thank you for the invitation. Today, it's an honor for me to represent Austria. Great to have you. Great to have you, Austria, on the board. And the last but not least is uh, Valeria Pareshiva. Could you tell a couple of words about yourself and the organization that you represent, Valeria? Yes, hello. I represent Asociasa Sepoate. Uh, association from Romania since 2014. Uh, currently, I'm studying a master's degree in psychology uh, with a focus on national security. Since 2020, I have a, pri a privilege to be the national director of non-formal education in the National Union of Students in Romania. And also, I played a significant role in fostering culture of quality institutional education with higher education institution as a member of Romanian Agency of Quality Assurance in Higher Education. And I have uh, experience in facilitating and uh, creating programs from non-formal education in the field of teamwork, critical thinking, personal development, vocational counseling, entrepreneurship, and green skills. 
Thank you for this wonderful introduction. We can move smoothly to our main part, which is the uh, the debate. Uh, we all know how important the green economy, green transition, and uh, green deal is, and uh, all we know that it immensely changed our uh, daily life and the modern Europe. What I want to hear today and what I want to understand is the differences deriving from perspective of your countries. I would like to ask you about the changes and the current state of debate from your national perspective from your daily perspective as uh, NGO workers, and even maybe from the, your local community perspective. So my first question directly to you, Ali, as the first participant is, could you tell me more about what you learned about your country or the region's current state of green transformation? Yes, sure. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. Um, well, in Hungary, the current state of green transformation, particularly in transportation, is gaining momentum. Uh, according to the survey conducted by our team, out of 54 younger participants surveyed, and there is a notable interest in workshops focusing on transportation and environmental topics. Although specific data on green travel is unavailable, uh, the survey reflects a growing consciousness among the young youth regarding ecological issues. Additionally, uh, Hungary's uh, commitment to align with the EU's climate goals by 2030 shows the region's uh, dedication to sustainability. Uh, apart from it, the, uh, on a governmental perspective, although not on a huge scale, um, there has been ongoing improvements uh, such as invest in public transportation to be more energy efficient and uh, environmentally friendly, uh, tax breaks for electric vehicle purchases and investments in cha charging infrastructure across the country. Uh, building bike lines, uh, bike uh, sharing programs and promoting cycling. Uh, is Budapest and other cities uh, leading the charge initiative uh, promoting green transportation and eco-friendly practices are likely to continue shaping uh, Hungary's environmental landscape. Okay, thank you very much from this uh, transfer perspective. It's quite interesting because we all, uh, I sometimes forgot about this uh, very important aspect as I don't possess a car on my own. Um, okay, uh, so Maybe we can uh, hear more from uh, from from Robin. The, the same question: How the green transformation is perceived uh, in your country, Robin? Mm -hmm. Could you disclose? Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. Again, um, well, uh, Slovenia is actually considered to be a green country. Uh, Thirty-seven percent of the territory is covered under Natura Thousand. Um, protection so so we are the first in europe according to the percentage of the country um we only have two million people so so this is one advantage uh considering uh the green transformation of course in in the law we we have uh accepted everything that the european uh, union is, is trying to achieve but but on the ground uh we're still lagging behind in some areas uh, considering my uh, city Ljubljana, my city Ljubljana was in 2016 uh, the green capital of Europe because it has lots of green spaces and it also decided uh, to become uh, first uh, European zero capital by 2030. Uh, according to the transport... First one in, in all, uh, I'm sorry, uh, occur, uh... In first one in in whole European Union, or Union. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. This oh, was that's the, impressive. The, this was the official statement, but uh, we will see how we will proceed. Um, the, 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 there are of course uh, some problems. Uh, just last uh, Saturday, uh, we, we had one another Erasmus Plus project uh, which was connected with the rivers, 
and with cleaning the rivers. Uh, for, for example, uh, we still have a lot of waste um, in our river. Uh, there was a cleaning up by professional divers and they collected uh, just from the central area of Ljubljana, from the river, uh, around 1,000 kilograms of waste. But, but this is quite a good achievement because when this uh, action started, uh, maybe 10 years, 15 years ago, um, they, they collected uh, 3,000 kilos and, and so on. So, so basically awareness uh, is, is, is getting better, especially among young people. Uh, transportation, unfortunately, is, is not good. Public transportation, uh, now they are making uh, a new bus uh, bu bus and train station and, and there should be a lot of more incentives uh, for electric cars and also for public transportations uh, for example um, pensioners have got um, free tickets uh, for using the public transport public bus um, but but still uh, big because uh, many people still live in the countryside lots of people go to work by car so uh, and also, uh, according to the car ownership, I think we are also maybe the, the first country in European Union, according to the number of cars per person. So, so, so this is also a big problem. Even in Ljubljana, uh, you mean the, the ratio is so high? Because as I uh, heard correctly, you mentioned that the public transport in your capital city is completely free. You don't have uh, to pay for your ticket. Uh, I, I, I mean, not for everyone, but but of course it's subsidized. Uh, for example, pensioners have got also uh, free tickets uh, to use uh, trains across uh, across Slovenia and so on. Uh, but the problem is uh, because a lot of uh, workers commute to Ljubljana for work uh, from distant places, and they mostly use uh, uh, cars because our public transport is unfortunately not as efficient as it should be. So, 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 so there is a lot of work to do in this area. Do you have a subway in uh, Ljubljana? Uh, no, no, we don't have a subway. Okay. Uh, we only have bus transport. Yeah. Yes, it should be enough, but as 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 I heard, it's it's not enough. It's not sufficient. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Th thank you for this interesting perspective. I also uh, read a report about uh, the best city to live uh, last week, and it appeared that. Ljubljana, or in general, uh, um, Slovenia, is one of the best uh, places to live uh, in 2024, which is impressive because we we uh, sometimes uh, forget that even in, in, in our region there are so many uh, beautiful and uh, comfortable places to live. So huge congratulations to you. Uh, for this, because I also think that uh, one of the key factors is that uh, the city is quite clean, and uh, and then this green transformation in Slovenia is 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 going quite well in comparison to to other countries. Yeah, um, I think in comparison with some countries, yes, but uh, but but we should do like uh, we should do more like, for example, Austria. Austria is much better. I mean, or Scandinavia, and so on. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very true. But uh, yeah, you you are uh, you you are in the right direction, I think. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Robin. Uh, maybe you. I'll move uh, with the same question to our third participant, Pavel, from uh, the the best university of Silesia, uh, <laughs> my university also. Uh, great to have you here. Uh, I will repeat the questions. Uh, so can you tell us more about the perspective and the lesson that you learn in your countries or in your region uh, about the state of green transformation? Yeah, sure. So hello. Uh, <clears throat> I would take it from the broader, uh, from the national perspective. It seems that the like Czech Republic is like on the good way to to meet this like uh, goals which uh, were set by our government to phase out coal by two thousand thirty three and to end with also with other like gas and uh, oil by two thousand fifty. So yes, they they have quite ambitious plans. Even though the reality maybe could be a little bit different, because like at least uh, 
in my region, the Silesian region, uh, we are quite uh, mm, we are very heavy industrialized side, this like region. Sure. If if I may, uh, just to ask you about the possibilities to move, for example, to Poland, because we all share the same region. I mean, Silesian region. And can you tell me if? you would go to Poland, you rather decide to go by train or, or by car? Yes, I'm sometimes going to, because like I live really close to Polish border and I go quite a lot, quite often to Poland. But it doesn't make any sense to go uh, by train if I want to go shopping there and it's like five kilometers. So yes, I'm using much more. Of course. Uh, which city do you live in? I live in Karwina. In it's Karwina, okay. it's like really on the border with the whole Poland. I heard that there is a, a quite popular trend uh, about people from uh, Czech Republic, uh, Czechia, that uh, they uh, usually do shopping in Poland now due to the rising prices uh, in in your country. And I heard that uh, that uh, allegedly uh, in Poland uh, prices are lower. Is it uh, true? Yes, it is. Like now, uh, it's not that uh, good as it was since like your um, currency is quite uh, expensive for us nowadays. So okay. it's uh, that, uh, good. Uh, but yes, yes, I heard that the the rate of of Polish zloty is quite high. Uh, yeah. uh, even for yeah, I, I I'm not sure about your your currency like Corona, but uh, uh, I. I I watched the rates of euro and of uh, of dollar and it's okay. it's really uh, quite good to be uh, to to travel abroad if you live in Poland because uh, you can easily exchange your money and and be a wealthy man uh, especially in in uh, in Slovakia in uh, in mm -hmm. in Lithuania for example countries that that uh, have euro Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you want to add something? Excuse me. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe yes. I prepared also something about the uh, energy mix. Like we that in like Czech Republic, we quite a lot um, nowadays. Like building lots of, of uh, the solar panels and other sustainable sustainable energy. <clears throat> so yeah, maybe we we, we we will keep it will, for the second part. Maybe we'll if, get there if we right can. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yes, it, it will be perfect for the second part because this is the more uh, more specific uh, answer. So uh, I will uh, I will keep it for for the uh, the the second round. Maybe uh, we'll uh, move to to Pelin to to your country. Uh, hello again. Uh, please, uh, because uh, as we we all know. Uh, Austria is uh, probably one of the most developed country in the region. So uh, you, I'm sure that you have uh, many interesting facts and information about the green transformation in your country. The mm -hmm. floor is yours, please. Thank you so much. So our project, the Green Tree Seas Initiative for Youth, is uh, specially designed for young individuals. And uh, our project has focused on uh, comprehensively understanding the broader landscape of uh, green transform transformation and the role of uh, youth in this transition. And uh, this includes examining both the general progress in sustainable development and the specific contributions made to and by young people in this area. Uh, as you may know, uh, Austria is committed to implementing the 2030 Agenda and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations, both nationally and on a global level. And uh, Austria has been promoting these principles of sustainable development in the environmental, social and economic dimensions for many decades. And in line with a multi-stakeholder approach, the federal states, uh, cities, towns and municipalities are all involved in implementing 2030 Agenda, along with social partners and stakeholders from business, the science community and civil societies like us. And uh, within this scope, Austria has embarked an ambitious path towards becoming a leader in green transformation. Uh, 
And uh, the comprehensive approach encompass energy, mobility, industry, and agriculture, aiming for a holistic swift to the sustainability. So in this sense, uh, different than the other European countries, Austria has pledged to achieve a carbon neutrality by 2040, 10 years ahead of the EU's targets. And Austria has heavily invested in renewable energy with over 70% of electricity generated from renewable sources, primarily hydropower, wind energy and solar power. And in transportation sector, Austria is enhancing the public transport infrastructure and incentives for electric vehicles, aiming to reduce significantly greenhouse gas emission. And the agriculture sector is also increasingly adopting organic farming practices. And um, in this regard, the inclusion of young people is very crucial for Austria. As uh, you, you may know, Austria has lowered the voting age to 16 uh, to enable young people to be a part of these democratic stages. And in 2023, uh, they published the Just Transition Action Plan on training and reskilling uh, the youngsters. And uh, with the involvement of uh, many stakeholders from business and vocational education training, uh, they aim to put in place the demand for skilled labor in the course of the green transformation by 2030. And uh, also Austria has modernized its tax system to introduce 30 euro per ton carbon levy. I'm not sure if you are familiar with the term carbon levy, but uh, it is the world's uh, first carbon emission tariff to be introduced by EU in 2026. So what EU wants is to introduce carbon emission costs on imports of steel, cement, fertilizers, aluminium and electricity by 2026. And uh, it's also um, different uh, to a system which is the Klima Bonus, which is paid to all residents in Austria to offset some of the costs brought by the carbon tax. And uh, maybe you might heard about it. Um, Austria is offering Klima ticket, a yearly ticket accepted on all public transport throughout the country. And the uh, government already um, saw sell around 1,000 in the first year. And so far, 200,000 people have bought one Klima ticket. And uh, this actually shift people's habits of mobility to use uh, public transportation over their private cars. Yeah? If I may just interrupt you, I would like, because it's all uh, great. And I, as I can see that you are the front runner uh, in, in terms of green transformation. Could you tell us if, do you see any issues? Do you see any problems that need to be resolved in your country? Uh, of course, we have actually uh, some problems um, due to, uh, like, despite our progress, uh, the road to green transformation, there are lots of challenges, such as economic factors, uh, because of the initial investment required for this renewable energy infrastructures, and also the transition costs for industries pose a significant hurdle, and uh, Furthermore, the social acceptance and behavior change are critical barriers, shifting the public mindset towards a more sustainable living practices. This requires time and persistence educational efforts. And uh, additionally, there are technological limitations that also present challenges, particularly in the energy storage and efficiency. And to overcome these obstacles, Austria is investing in research and development, fostering an innovation to find viable solutions that could propel us further on this path to sustainability. And uh, to, if you would like to sum up, um, in the area of climate and environmental policies, Austria's challenges include the need to improve the pricing of the greenhouse gas emission, reduce transport-related emissions, and the making the building sector more energy efficient. Okay, right. that's very interesting. Thank you for this uh, Thank you. for the story. Uh, I, 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 I thought that it's a success story, but I see that there are still some problems that need to be tackled. Uh, and, thank uh, you very much. 
Before we proceed to another uh, participant, I also would like to emphasize a very crucial point, which I forgot to mention. Uh, the sector, actually, especially the energy sector, is still male-dominated. And um, therefore, Austria is implementing lots of strategies to engage women and young people in the energy transition uh, stage and also sectors. Okay. Thank you. Yes, that's 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 crucial. Uh, no doubt about that. And our uh, last participants, Valeria, can you tell us more about your country? What, uh, how's the situation in Romania? Uh, what's your perspective regarding the green transformation? With a lot of growing awareness of environmental issues and con uh, commitment to sustainable development, one significant aspect is the push the, toward these renewable energy resources and because the country has a rich potential in wind, solar and hydroelectric power. And of course, there have been some investment in this sector to reduce reliance on fossil fuels. Uh, legislation and policy is promoting right now energy efficiency and environment protection. And they have been implemented, of course, aligned with these European Union directives. This can include measures to improve energy efficiency building. And we are trying to promote a lot sustainable transportation, like we offer free parking spots for electric cars. And of course, the young people have a discount of 30% if they are using this type of transport. And we are trying to enhance these waste management practices. But we have a lot of challenges, and I know for sure that you have heard about Romanian struggle with this air pollution and deforestation. This is one of our main significant environmental issues in Romania because it's driven by illegal logging. Uh, we have a lot of unsustainable forestry practices and land conversion for agriculture and development. Uh, this uh, threatened our biodiversity and we are facing a lot of issues with this area. We disrupt the ecosystem and contribute to carbon emission. But we are, uh, as a civic organization, we are trying to do a lot, a lot of planting action in the private sector, a lot to uh, help, help us a lot with this uh, awareness and improving the waste reduction. And also we have these uh, segregation practices. We had a lot of differences based on the behavior and the management of waste based on the urban area regarding the rural area. And we are trying to implement restrict regulation and waste disposal. But uh, let's say that we are on a good path toward this green transformation. We have a lot of challenges and we are trying to see what we can do. And also the public sector, it's a real connected with this fight because we are not that proud of our political and let's say legislation. That's the, the problem. Uh, th this will be also the issue for the second round, but I would like to uh, just ask you, uh, does your organization uh, mostly uh, operate in uh, in cities or rather in rural areas? Um, the main uh, point of our organization is in this rural area, but uh, we are trying to involve also uh, urban areas, depending on what type of activities. Of course, we have this planting action that is not in the middle of the city, it's next to a rural area, and we are adding a lot of young people from one of the poorest area uh, on our country. But we are trying also to uh, raise awareness in urban, in Bucharest mostly, because we have a lot of issues regarding uh, the way of transport. We have so many cars based on the population that we have in Bucharest, and we are trying to raise awareness for this type of youth to be more engaged and to be more aware of uh, what practices they can uh, add and to create a sustainable uh, way of acting. Thank you very much uh, for the first uh, uh, for your answers, all your answers, and for this first uh, uh, round of questions. Now I would like I would like to ask you about your more specific perspective and maybe mm, even your experience regarding uh, politicians, leaders of opinion, stakeholders, decision makers. Do you have any? barriers? Do you have any problems regarding uh, the state of the debate in your countries? We'll move uh, in the same order. 
which means that Ali, you are the first one. Could you disclose uh, any problems or any sentences from uh, uh, from from your uh, leaders of opinion, or or do you see any barriers in uh, green transformation in your country? Yeah, thanks. Thanks again for the question. Um, <clears throat> according to my ongoing research throughout this project. Uh, the main uh, challenges faced by uh, individuals such as myself as well as, well as the Hungarian government in transition into green mobility or to put it uh, more precisely improving the existing green transport uh, that includes the uh, although there has been is investment uh, made to improve uh, infrastructure for green mobility over the years Hungary still relies uh, heavily on uh, fossil fuel uh, for transportation. Uh, shift uh, requires more investments and changes in consumer behavior. As uh, Hungary's uh, limited economic resources uh, constraints the, the scale and the speed of uh, green mobility initiative. And secondly, the wilder big cities such as Budapest benefits from uh, uh, alternative uh, transport uh, options. In the rural regions of Hungary, uh, it faces uh, challenges in access to sustainable transportation options. Uh, and developing effective solutions for rural connectivity that are both environmentally friendly and uh, economically viable is crucial. Um, and personally, uh, I use green transportation on a daily basis for my commute. I do not face problems as I live in a capital where urban planning has been done, keeping green mobility in mind, including mixed uh, land use uh, development and pedestrian friendly infrastructure. And how about the approach of politicians? Do you have any uh, interesting facts about uh, the, the ruling government? Uh, to be honest, no, we are not like into much. Uh, relationship with the government officials on this part uh, uh, as uh, our uh, local uh, ties is limited uh, since we only mostly run the international projects. Uh, that's why I, I won't be able to say uh, like, uh, quite uh, okay, a specific so you don't have any Of course, understandable. Yeah, thank okay, thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, Robin. How how uh, how's your approach? How's your uh, position in this uh, kind? You have some uh, experience in politics. Maybe you can uh, share uh, some interesting uh, facts about uh, Sl Slovenian approach. Uh, yes. Um, well, the, my experience in politics was just in two thousand and eleven, and and I didn't continue. I, 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 I'm, I'm not a I'm not a member of, of any party. I wasn't also at that time, but I was just invited because I offered uh, some ideas to, to to that party, and I was like a uh, like an activist, uh, always engaged in in various areas. I mean, uh, one of the issues now that we have is the is the forthcoming referendum about building the second nuclear power plant in Slovenia. Um, I mean, according to the politicians, everybody is for it, but uh, they don't much listen to uh, civil society organizations uh, b because there are lots of issues. I mean, the, the problem is that uh, European Commission has branded now the nuclear energy as a green energy in, in the brackets. So, so politicians now want to seize the opportunity to invest uh, much more money into this area. Uh, this means that uh, if we uh, invest so much money in nuclear power again, then it will not be any funds available for real uh, renewables like uh, solar and uh, hydropower and so on. Um, so um, this is one of the options. The second option is also, for example, we, we, can we can we stay a, a moment uh, in this yes. in this uh, area because i would like to ask you precisely about this uh, uh, nuclear power plant we have a huge debate in poland now about uh, the the building of the first one uh, we are struggling uh, for many years um, but uh, can you tell me what's the uh, uh, the the the, the 
the position of the government regarding the the, the second nuclear plant are. Can you tell me also uh, what's the opinion of the society if in polls, especially? Do do you think that this referendum will be uh, win? in uh, in favor or against the second nuclear I mean, power plant i mean it's it's like the outcome has already been decided because it's it's such a propaganda just for i mean um, those who oppose nuclear power just don't get a lot of space because the politicians are united no matter if they are left or right or, or something right. uh, and, and and it's considered like to be um, a remedy for uh, curbing uh, global greenhouse emissions. But uh, we analyzed some reports and we did some researches and and one researcher was also from the Poland. It, 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 it is very good by Dariusz Plenkowski, Plenkowski, pardon. Okay. Uh, and, and, and he uh, he collected lots of materials that, uh, that nuclear energy is not sustainable and, and also it doesn't contribute to, uh, to low green, green House gas emissions. Uh, some say that uh, had, had, that, for example, if we take into account from the uranium mining uh, to the to, to the storage of nuclear waste, uh, it is the sum around of two hundred and sixty grams uh, of uh, carbon dioxide emissions. So, so, so that's quite a lot. Um, okay. So, uh, so I, I mean, that's interesting. But many people, but, but but many people still believe. I, I mean, unfortunately, all, all, also some people from the environment area believe that we, we should even uh, have nuclear energy in order uh, to fight the climate change. But I think this is not solution. I mean, uh, I completely understand the Austrians, uh, the, the position of Austrians that they, they are against our, uh, they are also against our first nuclear plant, and I completely agree with them. Be, be, be because this is not safe energy, and the problem is also that uh, our nuclear power plant is located in the earthquake-prone area. So, if something happens, if there's a big earthquake, it's it's very dangerous. I, so, uh, as far as I understood, the the first one is located by the the Austrian uh, border, and the the, no, no. the second one should be located where? No, 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 no. It's it's located um, at at the at the Croatian border, it, it's half owned by a Croatian government, but still, uh, the, the the Austria is, is quite close because Slovenia is a very small country, okay. and and the, the second power plant uh, is, is supposed to be located also in the same area. So, so this is one of the issues, and also, for example, one of the issues is also with the with, with the pesticide, with the overuse of pesticides, especially when European uh, Commission wanted. Uh, to 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 lessen the use of the pesticides, you, you remember all 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 across the Europe, uh, farmers rebelled against that, and also in Slovenia they rebelled against that. Uh, but um, but from the environmental uh, point of view, it, this is bad because we if we poison our soil, then we poison our future. I mean, I would completely support uh, farmers if they protested against the 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 use of uh, genetically modified uh, organisms and 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 and, uh, and against uh, more pollution but um, I, I mean th th these are areas uh, where uh, public opinion is quite divided that's that's a fair point okay uh, interesting debate we 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 encounter many similar issues in in, in Poland nowadays, as I mentioned, we want to build uh, the nuclear power plant, but uh, we had this uh, governmental uh, change uh, in uh, last year, and now there's an uh, ongoing debate about the, the building the first one, uh, nuclear power plant. Where should be, when should be, is, should it be just like that? So, so I, I fully understand your concerns. Uh, I heard uh, all these arguments also in, in Polish debate, which means that the, uh, the European uh, discussion about green transformation uh, is similar in many countries. Um, okay, uh, thank you very much, Robin, uh, for your contribution, for your experience. Uh, Pavel, uh, can you tell me more about your uh, perspective, Czechia, very uh, important country for 
for Poland. Uh, I know that you had also some problems with uh, with power plants, nuclear power plants. Uh, you excluded one of the um, American company uh, last year, uh, Westinghouse, as far as I remember. Uh, but maybe uh, you can share. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. I can follow up uh, and do. Yes, do yes, exactly. Some, so. uh, or, or you can also uh, add your experience from uh, uh, about. Uh, as you mentioned the the solar panels. We all. Uh, are interested in 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 your okay. history? Yeah, I uh, I'm personally actually uh, quite opposite of Robin. Yeah, that I'm like fan of the nuclear power, since uh, uh, and even like checks are in the public perceptions is like there is like quite big like consensus on this nuclear power as as a good uh, source of energy, especially when. Uh, when the wind is not blowing and sun is not uh, shining, so uh, I think it could be a great way uh, uh, to um, <clears throat> because uh, to overcome, especially just like uh, winter months when there is not so much like uh, sun and to not enough like and uh, renewable sources of energy. So I think it's a uh, good. Um, good way how to how to put uh, this like nuclear power instead of the coal which are uh, we depend right now uh f thank you very much pavel uh for for your uh, contribution maybe uh now uh, i'll pass uh, the the voice to pelin because uh, austria uh, uh had uh, already some experience in in this uh, case uh, i know uh, there is also a debate about uh, the nuclear uh, energy in this country. Uh, Pelin, do you have any uh, issues regarding uh, green transformation in general or in more specific about uh, um, nuclear uh, energy in your country? Okay, uh, to begin with, the nuclear power plants are very interesting for me because um, my bachelor degree is in international relations and uh, I was studying uh, at the university 2002 where the nuclear power plants were on discussion uh, if it is a good uh, reliable resource of energy. And um, that I had the chance to work uh, with uh, one of the uh, most uh, famous experts uh, in the whole world about tsunamis and uh, nuclear power plants. And uh, when the Fukushima event has um, happened, I was working uh, with the professor and he was one of the experts who went for the investigation after the uh, disaster. So... Uh, I know that it is very important uh, to locate a power plant in an area where there is no danger of earthquake or um, the system, uh, as we've seen in Japan, um, in Fukushima event, uh, can be uh, co can contain some mistakes because in that case, uh, they actually calculated the height of the wall. Um, they had a mistake in the calculation. And while the rest of the nuclear power plants in the region has changed the height of the wall, uh, this power plant, uh, which caused the disaster, didn't change because they didn't want to decrease their profitability. So I have some uh, interesting insights uh, from the event as I had the chance to work with International Atomic Energy Agency and also with the professor uh, about tsunamis and nuclear power plants. Uh, about uh, Austria, I know that um, there is a strong opposition to the nuclear power plants and um, apart from that uh, I don't have so many information and insights about this topic because um, we um, are not working um, on renewable energy sources uh, on the engineering site or construction or any kind of infrastructure site uh, but I could uh, give you a brief information uh, about uh, the whole country's uh, firm opposition uh, to the nuclear power plants. And um, about the politicians' uh, statements uh, towards green transformation, I could say that there's a consensus uh, on the urgency of addressing the climate change. 
and um, the president of Austria, Alexander van der Bellen, uh, which is a former leader of the Green Party. Uh, he has been the biggest uh, vocal advocate of environmental issues and uh, the necessity for the green transition. And uh, basically, he says that our house is on fire and we urgently need to extinguish it. And uh, the um, statements resonate deeply with the whole society's uh, ideas and uh, calling, of course, both the public and private sectors towards action. And uh, in this sense, uh, civil society organizations like us has a lot to do because we are directly connected to the society and uh, we have a chance to work uh, with the community leaders, uh, which has a huge uh, impact to change the behavior of the community. And uh, in Austria, there are a lot of educational um, uh, platforms that provide education in terms of green transition and climate change and climate education. You mean, uh, excuse yeah. me, uh, uh, sorry for interrupting, but uh, you mean uh, like this is the platform included in the school uh, curriculum or it's rather something additional to the school program? First, there is a school curriculum already has been put in place in 2009 and then renewed in 2019 and uh, this is a mass course but also there are some non-formal and vocational education training platforms uh, supported by the government and funded by the government and there are lots of initiatives uh, at the political level as well because Austria put a special emphasis on the involvement of young people to the decision making uh, processes in terms of environmental decisions and uh, as we understand from the survey that we have conducted in the beginning of the project youngsters has a, a strong um, uh, education and awareness about the climate change and the impacts and uh, when they are selecting the jobs they give a great importance uh, to the company's uh, corporate social responsibility values and also their actions in the field of environment and uh, we have seen that uh, their preferences are, are also going around this and uh, they are very keen to choose environmental uh, friendly products and they are aware about eco-washing of the companies where there are too many wrong information on the media or like the labeling uh, marketing advertisement techniques that companies are using. Uh, in a workshop, we were very impressed the educational uh, literacy, eco-literacy level of young people in Austria uh, regarding those topics. That, that's wonderful. I wish we could have the same uh, situation in Poland, but unfortunately, uh, our program is not <laughs> adjust to the green transformation per at least from my perspective, but it's good to hear that uh, in, in Austria uh, you are doing a, a great job uh, in terms of green transformation. Uh, thank you for this interesting and insightful uh, story uh, about uh, green transformation in uh, from an Austrian perspective. Uh, let uh, me move to the last but not the least uh, panelist from, uh, in our debate. Uh, uh, Valeria, please. Tell us more about your barriers, your challenges, and how the uh, green transformation is perceived uh, in the light of uh, political and uh, decision makers' uh, view. Somehow to connect with the last uh, topic that we have regarding nuclear power, I want to tell you about our public perception regarding the nuclear energy in Romania, because also we have the Cernavodo nuclear power plant that it's fully have, helping Romania with the safety and regulation and expanding plans. Uh, one time Romania has considered this expanding this nuclear energy capacity by constructing additional sectors to these Chernavoda sites. But however, the progress of these plans have been delayed to these various factors like uh, funding challenges, regulatory issues, uh, changes of government, and of course, uh, the expansion project just remains uh, right now uncertain. Uh, it's important to know that the public uh, perception is somehow mixed with both uh, a lot of support regarding this nuclear power, but a lot of critics. Um, uh, people are somehow emphasizing these uh, type of benefits of nuclear energy in reducing greenhouse and gas emissions, 
in energy independence and uh, of course providing a reliable source of electricity. But uh, opponents rely on concerns about safety, radioactive waste management and potential environment and health risks. And most of that are based because of lack of awareness and um, of course, uh, correct information regard the uh, power panels. Of course, uh, politicians right now are doing com a lot of commitment of promoting green initiative and sustainability. They are pledging for reducing carbon emission, increased renewable energy production. We have a lot of uh, local governments in Romania that have launched uh, different initiatives to promote sustainability and environment protection like uh, cities like Cluj-Napoca and Timisoara that have implemented progress to improve air quality, to expand green spaces, to promote sustainable transportation. But what we can see in these examples that we have a lot of um, resistance to change, uh, various stakeholders like industries, communities, policymakers are um, uh, uh, resistant to this type of changes. Uh, they are resisting to uh, transition to clear technologies because they are perceiving a lot of cost and concern about competitiveness. And we lack of funding and investment is one of the barriers that we can see a lot uh, in Romania. Uh, we have found this, but it's really hard right now to uh, promote and to sustain, to uh, achieve them uh, because we have a lot of bu bureaucratic hurdles, corruption that we are facing. And these um, uh, somehow are um, not helping us with overcoming the um, the transformation. Uh, we have a lot of uh, public awareness, the lack of public awareness, uh, the limited uh, engagement of uh, the public, mostly in the older generation. They are not trying to do their best. They don't have a lot of information and the public community are not addressing this. Uh, we can see a lot of uh, transformation and uh, different attitudes and behaviors in the youngsters, in the rural and also in the urban areas. But uh, it's just a, a part of our population that are trying to do some uh, some things. And these, uh, these facts somehow fragmented the approach to sustainability. But of course, we have the, the civic society organization, NGOs that are trying to do their best to advocate for environment protection. We are trying to help the kids to learn more. Besides the curricula, we have this type of green week and they are not doing... If you are talking about the um, third sector, I mean NGOs, uh, do they advocate uh, usually against or in favor of uh, nuclear energy? Uh, mostly uh, in favor of nuclear energy because they have more information, they can understand what's the meaning, what they apply, and they uh, understand the technologies behind it. It's a safe space to, to use. Um, the against area is more connected with um, the public sector of older people that have seen some issues in other countries, but not the uh, the one that are really informed and educated in this. So the education okay. part is really important to understand what's uh, behind and uh, what's good and uh, the advantage of that. Okay, so thank thank you for for uh, for the Romanian point of view at least. Uh, uh, you. Uh, we, we all heard uh, extremely interesting uh, things uh, from national perspective. Thank you for your uh, input uh, in uh, our debate. I know that you are doing a great job uh, in advocating for the green transformation, preparing all the materials, uh, engaging and empowering youth and uh, uh, all groups of society that uh, don't have appropriate knowledge about the grid transformation. Thank you for your time and for for your um, support in in this debate. Uh, I would like to uh, mention that uh, we uh, prepared a great report uh, about grid transformation that you can find on our website. Uh, I think that uh, our debate uh, is coming to the end. So let me just uh, thank you all our panelists thank you so much thank you very much for inviting us thank you, thank you for the opportunity
Thank you very much for participating in our debate. Thank you for watching us. I suggest you to uh, follow us on our social media. If you like our video, please uh, leave a comment below. Thank you very much and see you in the future.